Friends, please join with me in this litany of thanksgiving, which is a leader and people response. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator, for all God's gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank, thank you, God. God. For all that is gracious in our lives, revealing the image of Christ. We, we thank, thank you, God. God. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends. We, we thank, thank you, God. God. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. We, we thank, thank you, God. God. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We, we thank you, God. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We, we thank, thank you, God. God. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We, we thank, thank you, God. God. For the communion of saints in all times and all places. We, we thank, thank you, God. God. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To, to Christ, Christ be praise, praise and glory with you, Creator, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O God. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of the disciples said, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when this will be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am the one, and they will lead many astray. 
When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and empire against empire. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the gospel of hope. Praise Praise to you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Would you join with me in a moment of prayer? And a bang of the drum, one of the two. (laughs) Let us pray. Beloved and Holy One, how grateful we are on this Thanksgiving week to come into your house, to find your presence, and to allow that presence to dwell deep within each and every one of us. Open us now by the inspiration and power of your Holy Spirit that we might recognize your voice, listen, and respond, that we might truly be vessels through which transformation happens. Help us in the challenging of this word to be better ambassadors of your presence, of your hands, your feet, your life in this world. And in that meditation... May we see this world changed into your likeness, into that which we call heaven. And so now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, we bring to an end a series of sermons that we've been preaching here at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ over these last few weeks over under, the, under the sermon title, More Than Enough. Over these last few weeks, we have been thinking about the ways in which so many of us have been taught within our world to live from a place of scarcity rather than from a place of abundance. Uh, We've been challenged to shift our minds to what it is that we understand from the good news of Jesus, and that is that there is always more than enough. And listening to the stories, as many of you came in this morning about Thanksgiving weekend, uh, there was certainly more than enough on your tables. So many of us are perhaps thinking about dieting before the Christmas season and perhaps shedding a few of those pounds from the abundance of our tables. I'm grateful that we are a congregation that shares that abundance. And last weekend, as we gathered here in our church, we saw thousands of families as they came onto the campus, 525 families receiving baskets of food enough to feed them for Thanksgiving Day. And I'm sure, knowing this congregation, enough for the days following More than two and a half thousand mouths were fed this Thanksgiving because of the abundance and the generosity of Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. That is who we are. (laughs) Putting into practice what it means to live not from that place of scarcity, but knowing if there is more than enough on our table, there is 
more than enough for others. It is that abundance that we understand of this God that we worship, that this God is always more than enough, that this God always provides more than enough. And perhaps our own personal testimonies remind us over and over again that in our times of need and in our times of plenty, God has shown up in wonderful and mysterious ways. To understand that that is the God that we serve means that we have more than enough for ourselves and to share. Understanding that God lavishes God's love upon us makes us responsible and accountable for the ways in which we also share that love with others. To share it in the acts of justice, to share in acts of mercy, to share in acts of advocacy, and to truly transform this world. So what it means to be a follower of Jesus is not just to recite a creed or to think about ways in which transformation happens, but it is the embodiment of who we are, to be the hands and the feet and the heart of Jesus in the world. It is that transformation that allows Christ to come alive and to be present in the world. In the next few weeks, we'll be celebrating Advent, and of course, that leads us to the time of Christmas, as we remember the Christ child that came into the earth more than 2,000 years ago, and to understand the fullness of the gifts of Christmas, faith and joy and hope and peace, and we will shed light on that story again as we welcome one another into this sacred space. It is that abundance that we're able to know deep within our lives. It was that story that Jesus invited his disciples into as he would journey with them in those three years of his public life and ministry so that they too may be able to share in that abundance and then to share it with others. But we also know that Jesus entered a world of scarcity A world where perhaps there was a belief that there wasn't enough. A world that religion itself was contained within the temple walls and that there were only some who had access to it. Perhaps that's what prompted Jesus in this particular gospel reading to tell the disciples of something that was yet to come. And as he shared that story, he would say, look at the buildings, look at the walls, look at the fabric of what it means to be religious. And I come and tell you that I will destroy these walls, that there will become a time when nation will rise up against nation. There will be earthquakes and wars and famines. And it's in those times that you will see end times coming before you. Now, I have to tell you, That when we often read scripture on Sunday morning and we end with those words, this is the gospel of hope, (laughs) I'm not sure that there are words of hope. But I'm also mindful that there are many Christian denominations today that use these words as a way of implanting fear within the hearts of believers And for those of us who come from perhaps evangelical or perhaps conservative or perhaps fundamentalist congregations, these are words that have been drilled some sense of fear within us. And that we use these words to replace that sense of abundance with that sense of scarcity. That if I am not in the right space or if I am not in the right time or I'm not in the right place, then perhaps I'll get left behind on that last day. Can I get an amen this morning? So many of us feel that this is a gospel of fear rather than a gospel of love. But my sacred text reminds me all the time that we live not from a place of fear, but from a place of love, and that perfect love casts out all fear. That not one of us needs to be afraid, not, not one of us needs to be, live in that place of scarcity, not one of us needs to fear what is yet to come. And Jesus perhaps uses this example to remind not only those disciples, but those who would follow afterwards that when we live in the system of religion, 
rather than live in the freedom of our faith. But it's in those times that we need to be most afraid. In fact, there's a congregation not too far from us that is preaching a whole series of sermons right at this very moment on end times, and I can only imagine what is being said. I'm grateful that here at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ and congregations like us that we have agreed that we do not need to live in a place of fear, but that we are called to live in a place of freedom, a place of wholeness, a place where we are called to know God's love and to know without a shadow of a doubt that we have a God who has drawn the circle bigger and included every single one of us, that not one of us is left behind. That is the God that we worship every single Sunday. That is the God that we honor. It's the God that we see in ourselves. And yet it is also the God who invites us into the mystery of our faith, the depths of our faith, the things that we don't understand and yet we still know. I'm sure as we share testimony one with each other, we see the times when God has remained faithful, even at times when we wondered whether God was still present. But we have observed over and over again this faithfulness of God that has surrounded us. Perhaps we haven't felt it personally, but we have been in our small groups or we've been in some kind of ministry within the church that has reminded us and reassured us that God's faithfulness is from generation to generation. There are others that have stood in the gap for us in the times when we have not had faith enough for ourselves. But we have been grateful that God has shown up in friends who surround us and remind us that God is still there. God is still working. God is still speaking. It is that sense of the abundance of God that grants to each and every one of us a gift that we are able then to pass on to others around us. And it's my belief that when Jesus speaks of these end times, that when Jesus speaks of what is yet to come, that the challenge for each and every one of us is to live life to its absolute fullest. Not a place of scarcity, but in that place of abundance. To live more fully into life itself, knowing that God has us in the palm of God's hand. That's the graciousness of God. That means that you and I are not called to live in fear, but to live in freedom. And that we are called to live extravagantly and abundantly. That we are called to live in ways. Live in ways. That we should have no regrets. No matter when our time might come. I'm grateful to a God who didn't put a date stamp on the bottom of my foot to tell me when the time or place will come. And that I don't have to live knowing that there will be a date, but rather to know that today is the only gift that I have been given. And that as this is the day that our God has made, this is the day that I have been given. I am called to live it in such a way. In fact, I always say I want to live my life in such a way that Westboro Baptist Church will want to picket my funeral. To live it outrageously, to live it lavishly, to live it in such a way that I would have no regrets even if today was my last day. Which means that I'm also called to share it that way too. And to remind those who surround me in my own personal life just how much they mean to me, just how much I love them. Isn't that what Thanksgiving is all about? It's about taking an opportunity to give thanks, a sense of gratitude, not just to those who surround us, but to this God who has been faithful. This God who has reassured me and you over and over again that we are the best thing since sliced bread. 
That there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing. No thing. No church. No priest. No theology. That there is nothing that can separate us as we remain faithful to living lives out loud and lavishly. It's one of the hallmarks of Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, that we should dare to believe That God loves us just the way that we are. And if we believe that about this God, this is an extravagant God. A God who cannot be contained in the walls and fabrics, not only of the temple in the first century, but in the temple of the 21st century. And that our lives must move beyond these walls and into the world so that we might create love. It's that simple, friends, that we might be creators of love, creators of peace, creators of joy, and creators of hope. And yes, we understand that right at this very moment, there is much unrest in our world. There are wars and famines and earthquakes. And here in Texas, there are tornadoes. But those should not drive us to a theology of fear or a theology that somehow believes that we can sit back and let God do what God is going to do. But rather, just like our Jewish friends, we must be proactive in our actions of making this world a better place, a more whole place, a more loving space. That is the theology of Jesus. It is the theology of the disciples. It is the theology that moved beyond the walls that believed that God could be contained within a temple to a God who is calling us as the very fabric of God's new temple. Isn't it the Apostle Paul that would say the temple of the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? That you and I are the very fabric of God's temple. No longer contained just in a building. But moving us out into the world so that the world might know God. It is our role. It is our call. It is who we are. And we can't do that on our own strength. We can't even do that just with the strength of the few hundred people who are in Cathedral of Hope this morning. But we do it in the strength of all that is holy and all that is blessed and all that anoints us as the children of a living God. To me, that makes faith exciting. It makes faith challenging. And it helps each and every one of us to know ourselves, to know who God is, and to live from that place. It is the Christ in you that greets the Christ in me, which means there is a Christ in you that each and every one of us must seek and find, and that there is a Christ in all those beyond us. Last night, here in Dallas, Texas, our friends at Temple Emmanuel were picketed. Now, we know what that feels like, Cathedral of Hope. In fact, we know what that feels like, Cathedral of Hope. Just a few weeks ago, those same pickets were outside our own congregation, waving their Nazi flags And telling us that we were an abomination. And last night they were at Temple Emmanuel doing exactly the same. Somehow believing that this is God's job here on earth to tell us how much God hates God's people. Can somebody please tell me where it says that in scripture? For I have not found it. All I have found is that we are God's people, manifesting God in numerous and wonderful and outrageous ways. Not for God to sit around and have one or two of us to hate, 
but rather to demonstrate God's goodness. There will come a time when there will be those among you, said Jesus, who will lead you astray. But we are called to remain faithful. To remain faithful to the good news of hope. Perhaps that's why at the end of this particular passage, we were still able to say this is the gospel of hope. Because we are the living manifestations of God in the world, of love in the world. Even in the face of adversity, we show up with love. So friends, as we prepare to meet the Christmas season, in the midst of everything that we will need to confront, putting up our Christmas trees, writing our Christmas cards, ensuring that our house looks the best in the neighborhood, and woe betide the new neighbor who makes us look different. As we start singing our Christmas carols, wrapping our Christmas presents, and getting ready for the season, I pray that you will take a moment every day not only to know that you are a child of a loving God, but that you might take a moment every day to live more fully into the extravagance of God's love. May it be safe for you as it is beyond the walls of this church, beyond the walls that separate us, and the walls of others who would deny that God's love is in us. And may we live in each other's faces to prove the abundance of God. May it be so, as we give thanks this Thanksgiving weekend, and as we prepare our hearts for the generosity of a Christ who came to us at Christmas. God bless you. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen. <laughs> now, unto God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given, and the blessing of God, known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us, now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.